Hello everybody and welcome to this video of myself and Nick Carpenter and we are going to be looking in this video at a couple of specific examples to do with using alternate fingerings and just generally dealing with compensations and uh, compromises within the clarinet uh, as an instrument. So Nick, big one which a lot of people struggle with is the throat and the throat B yeah. flat in particular. Yes. And I think a lot of certainly younger players who maybe aren't as progressive, you know, they'll, they'll be using the simple B flat fingering and it can be quite a tight, stuffy sort of a note, can't it? Oh, without question. I mean, it's, it's, it's the design of the instrument. If you look at kind of bass clarinets and they have two um, register, two, two speaker tubes, you know, one for the throat and then one for the upper register. This, this sighting of the speaker tube is an absolute compromise. And so we have to find ways as players to, to, um, to, to, to get around that. Um, ultimately, we want a, a throat B flat, which has no difference in quality of tone. There's no discernible difference between the B flat and the A and the B natural and the C. So, There's a little difference there, but I'm using a really covered fingering in order to try and iron that out. The throat B-flat on its own is, and again, I'm going to say it doesn't matter what manufacturer you use, because of that compromise, it's quite a weak note. And, and that is once you get to kind of more advanced levels, is not really acceptable. Um, First three notes of the Brahms F minor. If we, without using that, those covered fingerings, we end up with, and it, you can immediately hear it. Yeah. Exactly. So we've got to find ways around that, and there are many, many different fingerings. I mean, there's many fingerings as you've got time, really, um, and you have to find the compromise and the the the, the 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 considerations for that are first of all, it's got to be a a kind of a convenient fingering. So when you're going from a B flat, quite often, more often than not, you're either going to an A below it or you're going to a C above it, something B natural. You've got to find a fingering which enables you to do that comfortably and easily. And the other, the flip side of it, it's got to be the, 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 the nicest sounding B flat. I mean, there are so many different ways. You can, you can hear, I can, keep, I can just keep going to find that fingering, um, and then you've just got to practice it over and over and over, so it becomes part of your technique. You, so you, almost, I say, I say to my students, whatever fingering you find and, and decide on, then that must ninety-nine times out of a hundred always be your fingering for a B flat or something similar. Um, and now I can think of so many, so many examples where that B flat is part of a beautiful singing phrase, a singing line, and the listener must be unaware that you're playing a throat B-flat. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you can't sit up in the concert and say, well, I'm sorry guys, but do you, do you know, because of how the clarinet's designed, this is a really <laughs> awkward note. Well, exactly. <laughs> but you'll be amazed at how many students do that. You yeah. know? And I say, well, that's like, well, it's my, my B-flat, and I haven't quite got it. Well, Solve it. That's right. Go yeah. away. You know, I'm yeah. talking about more advanced students here, of, no, course, of course, obviously. Um, so that's really important. Um, and it can vary model to model. Oh, without... you know, we're, we're talking about covering holes and venting things, and there's that experimentation, like you said. Yes. But don't be afraid to do that. You know, it's not absolutely incorrect. Mm. Correct in a way. No, and not not only model to model, but player to player, mouthpiece to model. Sure. There, are, there, are, there are, as I say, many, many different variables. So, so I could, I've, I would find that for me, this particular fingering, which is the throat B flat plus those two and those three, hopefully there's not too much of a discernible difference. Another player on the same mouthpiece, same reed and same clarinet might come to a different solution. Yeah. So each player has their own set of compromises and, 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 and uh, you, know, you, know, you, know, you often get questionnaires, what do you rank as most important, you know? And in this questionnaire, would it be tone quality? Would it be ease of fingering? You know, those two, which is more important to you? And, and, and you've got to find that compromise, okay? And that happens throughout the, throughout the instrument. Um, um, I, I saw the other day a, a masterclass with Michael Collins, and he was talking about the long B flat. 
uh, which is another fingering which so few people use. And having said that, I'm going to make sure mine is working now. But the long B flat. He said, "How you know? Why?" He said, "Why do people not use that? It's such a good fingering." It's so we're talking, yeah. First yeah. finger left, first finger right. Exactly, yeah. one and one. And he said, most people they always go to the side key B flat, which is fine, and particularly on these instruments. But it is fine. But the long B flat has a different quality. Okay, so for instance, he and the example he used was the opening of the uh, first concerto, Weber, starting. So he said, "Why is it that people use a side key B flat followed by a first finger F sharp?" Yeah, We've also discussed this on a previous video about on, on different manufacturers that F sharp can be quite pinched and have a bright quality, whereas on all on all instruments, I would suggest that. The forked F sharp has got a better sound quality than that first that, that middle finger F sharp. So Weber one, you can start with the long B flat, go to the forked F sharp. As another example, you have to make these these these, these judgments, always looking for what will enable you to express yourself easier. Um, so, and then of course, then the, the, the famous compromises and fingerings for, for top G. I mean, there's just thousands of them. I mean, you, you could go on. There's, there's books written about the top G fingerings. And, and for instance, we talk about, you know, Beethoven 8. That's a, for, for all professional clarinetists, that's one of the, you know, it always comes up in auditions. And Beethoven famously writes two top Gs in the trio section. And one has to find that fingering, which you know is going to speak, but doesn't, but is uh, orally, uh, uh, tonally um, similar to the notes around it, which are... Can you hear yeah, the difference very there? Different. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Uh, both fingerings, you know, standard fingerings for top G. It's, it's, you know, some can be flat, some can be sharp, but you're looking for that compromise, which will enable you to, to, to for, for that phrase to sing, and you can be certain that it's going to speak. It's no good having the most beautiful sounding top G if you can't guarantee it's going to speak. And likewise, you can have the most secure fingering for top G, but if it's sharp or has a bright sound, doesn't match with your Bs and your Ds, then that's not suitable either. So you've got to find these compromises. And it's knowing your equipment. And if you, you have a Absolutely. couple of alternate compromises, it might depend on where you're coming from and to. Or Absolutely. I mean, depends, and as a freelance player, maybe you're working with different orchestras. So in one orchestra, um, they might play bang on 440. Another orchestra might play at 442. And that in itself will then affect your, your decision as to which fingerings you want to use as well. Excellent. So, so, well, hopefully you found that useful. You can go and um, help your neighbours out by pressing that top G in 27 different that's, ways. That's I'm sure right. I'll appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, especially the dogs and the cats in the neighbourhood. I'd love it. <laughs> the mm. bats fall from the sky. And so, <laughs> but no, hopefully that's practical tips that you can go away and practice. And uh, like we said, don't be afraid to experiment, really. That's, that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. It does depend on the clarinet. So if your teacher has X fingering or whatever, mm. it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right one for you. I've said that so many times. Discussed. Exactly. What works for me may not work for you. You've yeah. got to find your own solution. Absolutely. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Nick, and we'll be back with some more videos very soon.